I don't know how to spell embarrassing. One R, two R, order of the letters. And that would be ironic if it wasn't for the fact that I actually don't know how to spell a lot of words. Sometimes I do such a bad job that autocorrect doesn't even know what to do with me. But I know what to do with me. I'm gonna fix me. Just need to figure out how. So in this video, we are training like a spelling bee champion, competing against some of the smartest people I know. Did I just get pranked? And finally curing my embarrassment. Double R, double S. That can't be right. Thank you to our patrons for supporting the channel and to Hostinger for sponsoring this video. I think my weird relationship with spelling started in junior kindergarten. I was like five. We were doing like this spelling test and not gonna lie, I was nailing it until we got to word number nine, does. I kept writing and erasing and writing and erasing, but it just never looked right. So I cheated, leaned over, glanced at my friend's paper and copied his answer. Got a perfect score. And that is the only time I have ever cheated in school because I felt awful. Clearly it still haunts me. I was pushed to the edge because I was so frustrated that no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't get the pieces to look right. And it still happens to this day, even 20 years later when I'm not being graded and it literally doesn't matter because I can use spell check. I get frustrated because I'm trying to get all of these words in my head out on paper and I can't because I can't spell all of them and either I need to pause my thinking to figure it out, or I need to deal with this squiggly red line in the corner of my eye. I just want to be able to spell any word that I can think of, or at least know how to approach how to spell it so that I don't just like keyboard smash after I give up and then autocorrect is like, and I know I shouldn't care, like it literally doesn't matter and I should just get over it, but I don't want to. I want to go through it. So, Let's learn how to spell. Luckily, there is an entire field dedicated to training this very skill. Spelling bee. Spelling bee. Spelling bee. Spelling bee fun. So in case you're like me and you have only ever interacted with spelling bees through American media, I read the rule book to figure out how they work. There are three main roles. A pronouncer who says the word and provides additional information if requested. A speller who, if they spell a word correctly, advances to the next round. And a judge who catches any misunderstandings, mistakes, or cheating. Now the biggest competition's format has changed a little bit over time to some controversy, but it was to account for television broadcast and skill inflation. Because for a select few, the spelling bee has gotten too easy, which is wild because spelling in English is hard. It's why I'm making this video and, and, and after spending the last 12 hours digging through linguistics textbooks and papers, I can pretty confidently say it's objectively true. You see, a language can be split into two parts, how it sounds and how it's visually represented. For many languages, like Italian, words are usually spelled the way they sound and sound the way they're spelled. But that isn't true for English, where a single sound can come from different spellings, or a single spelling can lead to different sounds. This can make it more challenging to learn English spelling compared to other languages where things usually look how they sound. However, this ambiguity is also really important because it's the very thing that makes spelling bees a challenge. So spelling bee competitors are kind of beating the English language at its own game. This also means that if I want to complete my goal, I just need to do well in a spelling bee. It'll prove that I am as good as I can ever be. So let's register for one. Spelling bee Toronto. Age categories, 12 to 14. Well, that doesn't work. Spelling bee for adults. 2022? I don't think they make spelling bees for adults. Listen, I have spent like the last hour, hour and a half looking for adult spelling bees. And like I see posts about annual fundraisers that only ever happen once. How are you annual? I guess most adults have other things they wanna do with their limited amount of time in a cost of living crisis. But not me. However, there is one, one consistent annual spelling bee for adults. It's run by this guy named Justin who maintains one of the most vintage looking active websites I've ever seen. It takes place in Long Beach, California, which is a bit of a trip, but I think it could be worth it. Just need to figure out how to get there. Hello. Hello. Um, I was wondering how much money we have. Mm, interesting. <laughs> what if Answer in Progress paid for me to fly to California to do a spelling bee? 
you know what? We've been doing pretty well. And I'm gonna have to say no. <laughs> <laughs> of course we don't have money for that. Is listen, I could do okay in it. Spell pterodactyl. T. <laughs> okay, I guess I need to figure something else out then. What do I do now? I made a Wordle spelling bee. Listen, hosting are the best all-in-one hosting service and website builder in the world. Keep saying yes to my stupid ideas. This is their fault. It was super simple, just logged into Hostinger, got a hosting plan, and set up a website with a free domain. And I went with the business premium hosting plan because it has these great features for a fraction of the usual cost, including cash management and an approved for four. This is particularly important because my website has so many bugs. I'm just catching and patching them. My report a bug button has a bug. Now, if you don't want to struggle with code like me, Hostinger also offers CMS options, like a hosted WordPress. They've got templates, automatic updates, and optimization, which means that you can focus on the content instead of my discontent making this. I've posted my code on GitHub so you can see how it works and maybe fix it. But basically, I gathered some words from some spelling bee study lists. Use the free Merriam-Webster dictionary API to get some definitions. I didn't include word origins, though, because I feel like people only ask for that if they're vamping for time. Anyway, I passed the words and their definitions to a text-to-speech API to get this. Your country in Southern Asia, white swine. Cacophonous! Can you spell it? To make sure people can cheat on their phones using text to speech or swipe to text, I created an on screen keyboard. It sucks! It's slow and discriminatory to fast typers. Don't know how to fix it, just type slow. To get daily updates, I found a seedable random number generator on Stack Overflow. Set the seed to the current date in the Eastern Time Zone, and it generates a universal daily word list for anyone who sees the page. Finally, a win! Woohoo! With the GitHub code, you could technically find the word list for any given day, but that's just studying. Nerd. Once I had all of that core functionality, I styled a few fake typos, made the buttons look like keycaps, and ta-da! Bicycle. Meaning. We have our spelling bee. We can now practice whenever we want using a randomly generated word list, or do the daily challenge and compare scores with anyone in the world. But the best part is that I can just stop here. I don't need to figure out cache purging, malware scanning, or server security, because Hostinger has me covered. And they can have you covered too if you go to hostinger.com forward slash answer in progress and grab yourself a hosting plan today alongside a free domain, free website migration, and 24 seven customer service. They also have an amazing new year sale on right now in case you wanted to secure your name as a domain for your portfolio. Or you can download my files off of GitHub and dupe my, my website so that we can take over the internet like those million Wordle clones did a few years ago. I think it would be funny. <laughs> Regardless, you could get an additional 10% off hosting plans anytime if you use our coupon code ANSWER. But anyway, with this very clear case of procrastination complete, I think it's time I learn how to spell. I decided to set a baseline by seeing how far I could get in practice. That can't be right. Okay. It wasn't good. Uh. So I pulled all of the words from the practice database and just started memorizing. I tried tying it to a physical space like I did when I memorized 3,141 digits of pi. But somehow, this was more boring. Now, you might be wondering what's the difference between words like this and other non-spelling bee worthy words. And to be honest, nobody knows how spelling bees choose their word list, obviously to avoid cheating, but just look at it. It's hard to spell. And uh, it's even hard to say, anisiconia. But there are some pretty common claims that the script's national bee tends towards words with a trick, like ambiguous vowel sounds. Caryatid, for example. That Y could just as easily be an I. But here's the issue. I think that I'm too stupid to even catch the trick. I'm still caught up by embarrassing. Double R, double S? So this is gonna be a lot of work. I just spent the rest of the day studying. It felt like all I did was eat, sleep, and breathe words until I am so bored. <laughs> it hasn't even been that long, but it turns out staring at words for a few hours gets boring. Who would have thought? So I want to see if I can just beat my old high score of one. Guarantor. Hey, geographer. Ha <laughs> I memorized that one. Depilatory meaning. Let's go! Listen. I got Eight right. That's pretty good. Depilatory? Nonpare? Hagiographer? <laughs> I think that I am ready to participate in an actual spelling bee. Just need some competition. 
Yeah, I'm so glad that I get to be watched while I do this. That's very relaxing. Gift meaning a special ability, talent. All right, I don't want to second guess myself. So it's gift. Let's f- go. That one's easy. I want to go fast. Dream. How many people do you think are going to make a Minecraft joke? Famous Minecraft YouTuber. The canceled uh, YouTuber. Speed one dude on YouTube. D-R-E-A-M. I don't want to say that I'm really confident right now because I know how this goes. Purse. Purse. Meaning a small container as a wallet. Purse. Ooh, that's not the word. I'm so good at spelling. Town. All right, going around town. I know this one. Going well so far. Transmissibility. Meaning oh. capable of being transmitted as in me? transmissible diseases. Excuse me? Uh, oh, f- Nah, nah. What? From town to drink <laughs> just really? <laughs> we just leveled up like four levels. What the heck? There we go. That's the difficulty I'm expecting. Trans... Miss, oh, this is where like the double letters screw me over. I don't know if it's a double S or a single S. The trick is you have to separate it into compound words trans, miss, and ability. Okay, ability is definitely A B I L I T Y or transmiss ability. But is it two S's? I think it's two. It's the double letter, right? I'm just gonna do that. No, no, oh, I lost. I'm done. What? Ah, I'm bad at this game. How, how's it? Spell. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Miss, oh no, it's an I. I was totally worrying about the wrong thing entirely. Sabrina Cruz, <laughs> town to transmissibility was a real jump. We, we this... went from one syllable to six. Transmissibility. There we go. Transmissibility. I'm just going to go with my gut. Transmissibility. I don't know if there's two S's or one S, but. Transmissibility. Let's go for go. <laughs> Transmissibility. Transmission has two S's. Here goes nothing. Oh, I'm just going to do it. Okay. <laughs> dew, moisture that collects on the surfaces okay. of cool bodies at night. Okay. Uh, the plant dew. D E W. Got it. Erode, meaning to destroy gradually by chemical means. Guys, I think I'm killing you. <laughs> Punting, canal, amalgam. I don't know if there's an E or not. Oh, I think there's an E. I don't know. Acutely. Yes! Let's go! Contingent. Contingent. Oh, oh no! Typo. Contingent. Contingent. Okay. But it doesn't look right, though. <laughs> no! I was right! I'm so sad. Cruel. Can you imagine if I just went <laughs> Cruel. Flexitarian, meaning one whose normally meatless diet. <laughs> Flexitarian? That's not a word. See, the struggle here is that there's no etymology for us to go off. It's kind of one of those neologisms that's just like Time Magazine made it up one day and it's a word now. <laughs> yes. Flex E. Harry. Um, yes. Ensemble. Ensemble. Licensure. Meaning, oh, the wow. granting of licenses, especially to practice a profession. Olivia Rodrigo's driver's license. So it's a C. It's licensure. Boom! License. Yeah. No! Yes. Defector. Meaning. I'm a genius. Defector. Okay. My question is whether it's ER or OR. All right. Yes, yes. Harmaton, meaning a dust-laden what? wind on the Atlantic coast of Africa in some seasons. Oh, sorry, a dust-laden wind on the Atlantic coast in some seasons. This is a wild guess. This might be it. Okay. I've got two problems. One of them is Harmaton. Harmaton? Who needs to know Harmaton? Clearly neither Phil or I. No! We ended in a tie, which is way too anticlimactic for a YouTube video, so I've challenged Phil to a tiebreaker in exactly one week. And in that time, I'm hoping to solve problem number two. Harmaton! It's just emblematic of the thing that's really bugging me, and it's the fact that if I encounter a word that I don't already know or have memorized, I don't know what to do. Like, I'll listen closely and try and spell it out phonetically, but as we've learned, English is orthographically inconsistent. In other words, whack. And I got it wrong. So, in the week that I have before my tiebreaker, I either need to memorize way more words or figure out if there's a better way. So I decided to reach out to old spelling bee competitors, champions, and coaches, which are a thing apparently. I wanted to figure out what approach they take. Unfortunately, 
Nobody responded to my emails. So I did the next best thing. I watched some YouTube videos and ordered some books. Just got my books. Some of these are smaller than I anticipated. All in all, this cost me $100. I'm really starting to remember why I illegally downloaded most of my college textbooks. I hope these are worth it. And shockingly, they were. After only a few days and nowhere near through all of the books, I realized that I had it all wrong. Not only did I make a mistake in how I approach spelling bees, but also, maybe, just maybe, is English actually cool? Listen, I have spent the last three weeks really coming to resent this written language, even more than I already did, from how it made it difficult for me to make my website because I needed to see if my check answers function worked, but I couldn't check the answer because I couldn't spell the answer, to realizing just how convoluted some of these spellings were while I was memorizing them, to Harmatin. I have seen this language stump some of the smartest people I know. Your boys got it. Your boys got it. Oh. When I was five years old and I was doing that spelling test, I thought that if you spelled things wrong, you were stupid. Then I learned more words, and then I realized that I'm not stupid. English is stupid. But now, while making a video on a quest to prove how stupid English is, I changed my mind. Because I learned the way that spelling bee competitors train. They know that there are about 470,000 words in the Merriam-Webster unabridged dictionary. And they know that it is impossible to memorize them all. Instead, they hack the core functionality of the game. You remember that gap we talked about? The one that exists between English pronunciation and spelling? Well, champions, they don't just know about the gap or accept it. They figure out why it exists. And they do that by considering the history. Because here's how English got so whack. <laughs> we should sell this as a shirt. So things start off in the fifth century when a bunch of Western Germanic tribes decide to go Brexit, what are Brexit? And they take the land. Does it count as turning tables if this is before British imperialism? One of the bigger tribes then named the territory that they have England and their language English. Look familiar? Not really because the little writing that did exist was written in runes, you know, from that one Tom Scott video? Harold Bluetooth. I don't know if I'm hallucinating that, to be honest. Anyway, Celtic scribes saw this and they were like, this is kind of whack. Can we use normal letters? And by normal letters, I mean the Catholic Church's letters! Latin. So they began representing English, a Germanic language, with Latin characters. That's really cool, right? Except for the fact that Germanic languages sound really different from Latin ones. Let me show you. Google Translate. Here's how you say a loaf of bread in Italian. Una pagnotta. Now here it is in German. I love bread. Bruh. This kind of meant that the Latin alphabet couldn't really handle all of the sounds that the English language could make. However, we kind of just mix Latin and runes when necessary, which is great, until the French. They rolled up in the 11th century and were like, actually, England is French now. The accent wouldn't have sounded like that back then. Wouldn't sound like that now. I'm gonna stop doing accents. So French scribes started applying French spelling to English words while also keeping the original French spelling of words that snuck into English vocabulary. Now, this had a pretty dramatic effect on the language, turning Old English to Middle English. And honestly, it was pretty great. We had roughly consistent spellings for sounds and the main variance was only caused by accents. Imagine it like this. We have Waluigi. If we wanted to write down how Waluigi Luigi laughs, we would probably go something like Mwehehe. What a charming rascal, what an accurate transcription. However, let's imagine that Waluigi was born without a mustache. Just never had one, never will. I believe this would affect the way he talked and more importantly, the way he laughed. unnatural. Now certain pronunciations and accents did begin to dominate in spelling in the 1400s with the invention of the printing press, which brought the written language to more people than ever before. This meant that written English was finally stabilizing in a way that words were spelled the way that they were pronounced, at least by some people. And then some bullshit happened. Just as things were getting good, people in the south of England were like, I don't think we're special enough. I need to stop the accents. They just started changing the way they said things. It took a while for the dust to settle, but the changes were so significant that linguists call it the Great Vowel Shift and Middle English stopped being Middle English and became Modern English instead. Shep became Sheep, Connect became Knight, and honestly, 
Wasn't that weird? Languages change and evolve. However, the problem is that the printing press locked in the old pronunciations. And we just keep getting further and further away because pronunciations change faster than we could ever reasonably update the dictionary. Plus, the English probably didn't help when they terrorized the planet and spread English to more places than we could ever hope to regulate. This was the worst part of colonialism. But yeah, other languages have regulatory bodies. It's how German just added a new letter in 2017. You could just do that. The most English has for regulation is pedantic Reddit comments. And given the fact that the word of 2023 was Riz? I don't think we're doing a very good job. Why is that a butthole? But here's the thing. After learning all of that history, I'm starting to think that control isn't the point of written English. I started this video because spelling in English is frustrating, right? It's just full of all of these rules that I am way too stupid to remember. Like I before E, except after C, except if you're one of those words where that isn't true. English! However, all of this made me realize that English isn't trying to punish you. It isn't a rule book. It's a record. One that's used to remember not only what was said, but who said it, and where, and when, and how. So it shouldn't be embarrassing, double R, double S, to spell a word wrong. It should be exciting, because written English is this time capsule buried underneath those squiggly red lines. And now, we're gonna dig it up. I realized that my website was focusing on all of the worst parts of English spelling, leaving words without their historical context and punishing you for getting anything wrong. So I made more calls to the Merriam-Webster API and pulled the etymologies of each word. Then I routed each etymology through GPT-4 to get them into more reasonable lengths. This made it a little bit more affordable to use a better text-to-speech service for the prompts, because the old one I used had a weird habit of not saying all of the words. Dianthus, meaning. Dianthus, meaning. Dianthus. Okay, so we've got all new prompts with historical context now, like... Aioli, a noun meaning a mayonnaise flavored with garlic and sometimes other ingredients. The word originates from the Occitan language, combining I for garlic and oli for oil. Neat! But now I want to change the rules of the competition so that it's focused more on exploration rather than just on punishment. You get one thing wrong and you're out. I don't want that anymore. This time I made it more similar to a practice mode, except with a fixed number of words. You still get the etymologies, but you don't get kicked out if you get something wrong. You kind of get to explore the words at your own pace. Okay, so it took me about two-ish days to put all of this together. Not too bad. Except for the fact that I lost track of time, and today is the day that I have my tiebreaker with Phil. I am severely underprepared. I guess I've just spent like a little too much time appreciating the history of the English language instead of learning it. Oh man, this is gonna go so badly. Wish me luck. All right, let's do it. I did not have my coffee before this. I was gonna do this later in the day, but I literally couldn't wait. All right, let's go. Mythos, a noun meaning myth. The word is derived from Greek mythos meaning- All right. I've read Percy Jackson. Mythos, M-Y-T-H-O-S. Lock it in. This is awful because I have no idea if I'm getting it right. Collocate, a verb meaning to locate. To okay. Things together. Sure. Collocate. Etagere. Oh my gosh. Etagere. Etagere. Not gonna overthink it. Because I know it's le premier étage, le deuxième étage. It's like the stages. These science words. Otios. Otios? That looks Latin. Rugos, derived from ruga, meaning wrinkle. We'll just roll with how it sounds. Rugos. Palladium. That's easy. I've heard the word palladium. I'm gonna do a single L, because palace has one L. Palladium. Asparagus, a noun That's meaning easy. any of a genus. What? <laughs> Ammonite, aminoidea, of extinct cephalopods. I hate you, cephalopods. Keplerian. Okay, so Kepler, so Keplerian should be that. Should be spelled like Kepler, Keplerian. Piccata. A noun meaning thin Chicken slices. piccata? Oh my gosh. So if it comes from the Italian, let's imagine P-E-C-C-A-R-E. Pinocchio's got two C's. It's Italian piccata. Dysphagia. It's like aphasia with a dis. I feel confident about this one. Coltan, scientific vocabulary, combining columbite okay. and tantalite. It's just like mashing those two words together. It's just coltan. Well, they kind of gave it to us there. Ikebana, 
A noun meaning the Japanese art of flower arrangement oh. and emphasize the Japanese. Let's just try this, man. I'm realizing now that like, no one will be rooting for me. I'm the villain in this scenario. Anecdote. A noun ah. meaning a short narrative of an- Boom! Polydactyly. Cats. Ernest Hemingway loved collecting polydactyl, polydactyl cats. Oh, almost had a typo. A Feel good about that. Dulcinea. A Dulcinea. From Spanish, specifically- I've Spanish. listened to Man of La Mancha. Ciopino, derived from the modification of Ligurian dialect. Modification of Ligurian dialect, of course. Okay, because it's Italian, we're doing some double consonants. Ciopino or Ciopino? I, I have no idea. Malachite. A oh. noun meaning a green mineral. Easy. That's a easy. noun meaning a bindi. A noun meaning a mark, such as a red dot. All right, let's do it. Ah! <laughs> I just spelled some words. Oh, you just did it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shoot. Would you like to tell me your score? And I'll tell you mine. I got 19. Damn it! I got 13 because I misspelled some stupid words. Really? I was so mad at myself. Would you, would you? I misspelled the word asparagus, man. I heard <laughs> asparagus and I just stopped the clock and I was like, asparagus, oh, no. easy. I was yelling so loud when I met, I saw Knubial and I was like, oh my gosh, what an idiot. Imagine this is a little crown. Well, actually we'll Photoshop a little crown lowering on your head right now. Perfect. <laughs> you are now answering progress as spelling bees. What Champion. an honor. I was so nervous. That was a trip. This has been a crazy day. All right, bye. You know, even though I lost, like seriously really lost, I'm not that mad about it. And it's not because Phil deserved to win, but he really did. He called me out on the lack of etymology in the website before I even knew that etymology was important. But it actually has nothing to do with that because this video was never really about spelling bees. It was about me and my journey and personal relationship with the English language. It sounds so stupid, but now that I've reached the end of this stupid video, I'm coming to realize that that's what this has always been about. When I used to look at those squiggly red lines, I get so mad. But now when I see them, I look at how they're actually spelled and appreciate how freaking weird it is. Why isn't there a letter there? C-N? Who let that happen? Probably some Roman weirdo. And I've just really come to appreciate all of the history and culture and people who made these words the way they are. Except for asparagus, that was embarrassing. Double R, double S.